Today is the day. Today's the day that I dragged the 63 truck to the shop. Got the trailer all hooked up. I gotta throw the uh, battery on the charger for just a minute because uh, winch battery's on its last leg. And uh, we'll slap some wheels and tires on it and we'll get it drug here to the house. Y'all stay tuned, it's it's coming, it's, it's, it's good. Oh, and I'm gonna have to change shirts. I had a slight welding incident. But we're getting there. We're getting there. So it looks like the battery's at about 50%. So I'm gonna throw it on there. Probably let it charge for about an hour. Then we're gonna grab that truck. Pretty excited about getting started on this one. Really excited about getting started on this one actually, but I think I gotta go. I think I gotta go change. Well, it's time to drag the old girl home. And I gotta put some tires on it that'll actually hold a little wind and while we're doing that we'll look at some things on it but gotta drag it out of its grave here it's been sitting here for a, a while and uh yeah let's get some uh wheels and tires on it and uh tell you, i think i'm gonna go out and buy the nicest chrome wheels and tires that I can find to put on this old rig because I think it deserves it. No. No, I'm not doing any of that. There's a there's a couple of tires laying over here in the tree row behind it that's uh hopefully will hold air and yeah. Get you in here and look at this. It's been converted to a disc brake setup with a uh, aftermarket kit. Looks like the uh, shoes and all are good, which is good because I have no idea what brake shoes would actually fit that kit. Hmm. Just thought about that. I'll have to do a little research on that to see what shoes actually fit this kit. Um, but that's already been converted to disc brakes, which would make the line locks that much more funner. Found these laying right over there. They're, they're race tires. It says so right there RT race tire. Race tire and street. It's right, it's right there. There we go. That's good enough for putting on the trailer. Sure. 
Let's get it on the trailer. Call it a hunch, but I think the I don't think the e-brake's working. Um, this truck's a little little old for the Bluetooth connection. Um, but maybe it's been upgraded. I, I'm, I'm jumping to conclusions. Maybe it's been upgraded uh, and has the Bluetooth e-brake. Uh, it, it has been upgraded with Bluetooth lug nuts, which apparently work really well. So there's that. Uh, set of axle flip the axle is now over the uh over the top of the spring instead of under it so you know yeah That should increase the value of the old rig 20 oh 25 cents uh, something about a lowered rig down in the dirt and you stick 31 inch mud tires on it yeah that just adds a little cool to it so, now we got it up off the ground you're gonna load it on the trailer and get drug up to the shop well it's the next day and the weather has significantly improved. Nope, kind of cold. And uh, I've had more wardrobe changes during this episode than a Reba McIntyre concert. But, I've got the trailer backed up and there's something sitting right here, another vehicle sitting right here that can't quite get around. So I'm gonna pull cable and scooch it around that way a little bit and hopefully load it up all before this winch battery dies nope 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 probably probably not at all i've got my little harbor freight you have no friends controller here try to scooch it around now Anybody else shot the winch battery died? Nope. 
charged it last night. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, trailer. I'm going to get her up to the garage. Once we get her to the shop, we'll take a real more kind of in-depth look around at some of the things we have to do, some of the things I'd like to do, some of the things I'll probably never actually ever do. So let's, let's get started. All right, so the truck is out of its resting spot. We've got it back up here to the shop and uh now it's uh let's just take a walk around and look at it and see what we got for those that don't know there is a three thousand dollar budget build uh going on with uh a group of of youtube folks um well anybody can get in on it you just have to document everything on youtube um it's put on by hot rod guy garage uh, you can go check out his channel and there's a, a big group of people already getting involved in it this is going to be my entry into that that challenge now <clears throat> part of the challenge is we have to document everything uh all the money we spent and all where it goes now i looked at other trucks i did i wanted a truck and i looked at other trucks i've had i guess over the last I'd have to go back and look, maybe 10 years. I don't think it's been 10 years, but over the last 10 years, let's say, I had about 125 of them. Uh, I've actually built my shop off the F100 truck. So, like anything, the market goes up and down. I've bought these trucks and drove them home for $600 uh, four or five years ago. Times have changed. There, I looked at some now that were in the seven dollars $800 range, but honestly, they were, they would have been great if I didn't have a cap, but if I bought a $600 truck, I'd have spent $4,000 making it a $3,000 truck. You know what I'm saying? So I paid $1,800 for this truck. Now I know, I know that is a huge chunk of the $3,000 budget. Not good at math, but let's just use the, the figure here that that's probably three quarters of the budget, uh, $1,800. But I didn't mind paying eighteen hundred dollars for this truck because this truck is complete. It's not running and driving, but it's all there. Uh, mostly all there. There are no brake lines or anything on the truck. It's going to need a master cylinder and all brake lines. It does have disc brakes up front, but they're not plumbed. They're just there. So I'm going to, have to do all the brake lines and a master cylinder. And there's no fuel system on the truck, so I'm going to, have to do a tank, fuel lines, and everything. Uh, now some of the saving graces is, is we are allowed a tiny little budget, uh, for things we have laying around the fuel system. I know I can do without an issue because I have other vehicles laying here that I can pull a tank out of and you know, I have to buy a piece of line or so, but I, I, I have tanks and filler necks and caps and I have all that stuff here that I can use. Brake lines, I, I'd have to buy them. I'm not going to use a used brake line. So, uh, brake lines I'll have to buy, but I'll probably just buy a roll and bend my own to do it on the uh, uh, low buck side. And I'll show you how to do all that. As far as uh, engine goes, I'm not going to go over the top. It's probably going to be, uh, of course, just like everything, FE, right? Uh, I'm an FE nut. And uh, so it's going to be just a basic dingle ball hone put rings in bearings and gaskets and uh, throw a cam in it and it is what it is. Again, I'm not, this truck will not win the race. I'm throwing that out there right now, this truck will not win the race. Um, 
I don't have the budget with what I'm working with to make it over the top fast. If I'd have started with a $300 truck, then maybe I could have uh, thrown nitrous or something on it and all that stuff, but that's not what I'm going after. I'm pretty much using this budget build as an excuse to build me a shop truck. And with that parameter in mind, I've got to keep in mind this thing has to be able to be driven anywhere at any time. And I just want it quicker than it would have been stock. If we go out there and, you know, win a round or two, that's just icing on a cake, but I'm into this to have fun. So. I think this is gonna be a fun build and I'm gonna show you how we can make this truck running and driving down the road and kinda quick for a $3,000 budget. The best, the, the secret to that is to start with the best start you can afford to start with. In my case, it's this. This is the best truck I could find that would fit into that budget that allowed me enough room to make some subtle improvements. Uh, but the truck does need some stuff. Some of the stuff it's not going to get. Uh, some of the stuff it will get. But let's take a look at the truck, look at everything around it, and uh, talk about some of the things it is and is not getting for this challenge. This truck will get upgraded later after the after the challenge, but right now it's just all about making this $3,000 budget build um, event and uh, making some... We're, we're not trailing it to the event either, by the way. We're driving it from here to... Brainerd Motor Motorsports Park, if I can spit that out, in Georgia. And uh, then we're going to do a cruise up over them, and then we're going to race it. So there's no trailer involved in this. It's going to be driven there and back. So uh, I'm kind of excited about that as well. So I'm going to take the whole drag and drive to the next level by driving to the event as well. Uh, so let's get into it, and let's take a look at some of the things that I have to do, some of the things I want to do, some of the things that may or may not fit into the budget. All right, let's so let's look at a couple of the things that I've got no choice. I have to address them for what I'm doing. One, this truck would have factory been a 292 Y block. For those that are not familiar with the Y blocks, they don't really use motor and uh, frame mounts in the traditional sense that you think of on the side of the motor. Uh, <clears throat> they have kind of a, let's call it an L-shaped bracket that goes into the front of the engine behind the crank pulley, and they actually mount just one bolt on the on the front uh, near the course port up here. Well, <clears throat> at some point in this life, the Y block was pulled out, and when they swapped the engine, they wanted to use traditional motor mounts, so they put in a cross member out of some kind of random vehicle. I don't know what. <clears throat> I don't know if I didn't pre-plan. Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat this morning. I don't know if I didn't pre-plan or what, but apparently then the oil pan clearance was in the way, so they cut out the center of the cross member. So we got a piece of cross member, a piece of cross member, and then the motor sitting on it, and oil pan kind of in the middle of the two. If I was just going to drive it around town and do nothing but run the part store and back in it, if it was that kind of shop truck then i probably would never even consider it uh doing anything with it because it holds the motor in place it's fine it'll drive blah 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 considering the fact that i am going to take it on the track occasionally even though this pre this race is technically a no prep race so it's kind of like street racing if you will to use a, a term but since i am going to take this truck down a track um uh, it's kind of a safety concern for me so i want a full uh i want to tie the two frame rails together there and that's going to be the first thing that i have to address uh see if we can take a look at it uh see it under the truck it's kind of hard to see but if you look up right up through there you can see where they cut it off right there and on this side over here it's the same way they cut it off because the oil pan it's it's right let me see if i can zoom in right there that is not the exhaust. That is the cross member that was cut. So, uh, yeah. not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if at some point they had an issue with the engine and swapped out to a third engine. I'm not sure why it was cut because you would think that, that was some four planning. It's pretty rusted where the cut was. So, it's been that way a long time. <clears throat> I don't know. But that is something I'm going to address, and it's not going to be difficult to address. I've got some roll bar tubing here. Probably what I'll end up doing is, since that is round, I will probably uh, 
use some roll bar tubing, up in there, kind of sleeve in there, weld it up, and just bend it around so that everything clears and just go that route. It's not a, uh, it's not a difficult fix. Uh, it takes time. Really not anything that's gonna cost any money. Uh, when I put the roll cage in my Galaxy, I had some leftover roll bar tubing. Uh, if it becomes <clears throat> one of those things, I can always look up what a piece of uh, two foot stick of roll bar uh, type uh, tubing will cost and just deduct that. But uh, honestly, that's it's scrap metal. So uh, we can go buy scrap metal weight on it if you want to. That's, that's all it is. It's actually in my scrap metal pile right now to go to the scrap yard. So um, I can just take that and build a new cross member not a problem at all, so no big deal there. One of the things that <clears throat> I've mentioned is there's no brake lines on the truck, so I've got to run brake lines on it. Um, I need to put a master cylinder on it, and I'll probably do all that while the motor's out. Just do the brake lines and everything, that way I can run them across the bottom of the firewall, uh, just everything out of the way, or actually when I do the cross member, I can run them down and around the cross member and over and uh, get all that done. There's no fuel system in it. <clears throat> I have a Mustang gas tank that I will probably sit back here between the frame rails and just make me a clamp, uh, not a clamp, but run me a strap of metal across with bolts in it to clamp the, the tank down into place. Uh, kind of like tank straps on a, on a modern car. Uh, so none of that is really budget issues. Uh, it's all fairly simple stuff to fix. <clears throat> These wheels and tires, of course, are not staying on it because, well, I don't really like the modern uh, wheel on these trucks. I, I just don't like the way they look. Um, the the paint body work and all that is pretty much exactly what it's going to be. I'm not really changing any of that. It's going to look pretty much exactly like it looks now. Probably get a bath so I can see how the windshield depends on how much money i spend on the budget if i don't have the money for soap then uh, maybe just hope it rains on the way down uh so yeah that's pretty much the outside my sun's beating through this morning so well, hopefully you can see everything but in here pretty much everything's here these uh handles and all they're laying here in the floor and one's in the seat the seat other than this blowout right here is in good shape so Depending on budget, I may just leave the seat the way it is, or I may order one of the LMC uh, do-it-yourself seat covers there. They're about a hundred bucks in that neighborhood and just recover the seat myself. Uh, Cause the foam is still, still good. It's just, you know, yeah, still, still good. Um, all the, it's, it's all here, the, the, steering wheel rings laying in there the little visors that go over the windows right here they're they're laying over there so all that's probably going on there uh i am going to have to do floor pan work in this thing uh the floor pan right up there uh if it was back here i probably honestly would throw carpet over it or a rubber mat that's laying in here and not worry about it but being right there i got a feeling i'm gonna be stomping on it and uh I don't want my foot to go through the floor, so I'll have to at least do a floor pan on this side. But again, solid truck, solid truck. Uh, I don't, rusting floors don't even concern me because they all have rusting floors. If you find one of these trucks that don't have rust in the floors, somebody's replaced the floors. That's my, my thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, you can try to change my mind if you want to, but that's my thoughts on it. I uh, love how easy this door shuts. It shows it, uh, it shows that everything's good and tight. Bed, the bed is pretty good shape. Sun's still beating on us. Get down in here. The bed's in pretty good shape. There is a giant dent, like loop right there, which I don't care. Uh, probably what I'm gonna do if I put the tank under the bed, I may end up cutting a section of this bed right here anyway putting hinges under it and putting a flap right there. Uh, just put fuel in and just have a, a, maybe a flap with a little latch or something on it right there so it looks like a solid bed and you don't notice it. 
you pull up, just flip the flap, and you flip the flap and uh, put gas in the tank. So, yeah, it's it's great for what I'm doing. It is great for what I'm doing. So basically, I have twelve hundred dollars to finish the truck with. Now, there are a few things that won't factor into that $1,200. We are allowed a tiny little budget um, for parts that we have laying around. That will probably take care of my fuel system and uh, I'm gonna have to look. I think I have, I think I have a master cylinder in the box for one of these. If I don't, I mean, they're like 30, 35 bucks, so it's not a big deal. But I think I have one that's 30 or 35 bucks I can put somewhere else. But uh, I have about 1200 bucks to work with and uh, bulk brake line material and uh, some rubber hose isn't going to take much money. I'm going to put most of that money into uh, stuff that doesn't matter, quite honestly different wheels you know stuff that does absolutely nothing to improve the performance of the truck seriously I I uh, I'm gonna dingle ball home uh, put rings in bearings in I will probably spend and I'm gonna put a cam in uh, cams now uh, you know you can find a a cheap Chinese cam on eBay for a couple of hundred bucks. Uh, might even be able to find a, a comp cams cam for a couple of hundred so, bucks. A couple of hundred bucks in cam and everything. So let's figure after we freshen up the motor, we have about a $500 budget left after that. And I'm just spitballing. We'll actually write down, there's a, gonna be a board on the wall in the shop that will have every nut, bolt, and everything figured out as we go so we know exactly how much we spend. There won't be anything hidden on this because again, I don't care if it wins the race, That who cares? I'm having fun. The real thing I wanna do here is to show you how it is possible to build a cheap vehicle and have fun with it. It's got nothing to do with winning or losing. The fun for me is gonna be in the fact that I'm out cruising around in it and I didn't spend money on it or not. A, uh, didn't spend much money on it. That's, that's the fun for me. Uh, could care less if it wins or loses. So, uh, we're gonna do two things. One is, after we spend the money on the motor, I'm spitballing thinking maybe we have about a $500 budget left. So one or two things is gonna happen. Uh, either A, I'm going to shop around and try to find a four speed, cause this is a three speed right now, it's still a manual. Uh, but I'm going to shop around and try to find a four speed that maybe has a broken ear, a busted housing, or something along those lines that I can pick up cheap. And uh, well, my background is actually in welding and uh, metal work. So uh, if I can find uh, a four speed that has a crack or a busted housing or something along those lines, a broken ear or something, I can repair that. Uh, nothing but my time so if if i can find one now that's highly unlikely they are out there but they're few and far between so you kind of have to get lucky to find one of those i have bought a couple in the past but you got to make sure that if you find a busted uh four speed it's not something where when you open it up you can turn it up and dump all the gears out uh, like a bag of rocks because the gears get expensive. You want it to be something where, uh, again, an ear's broken off or maybe there's a crack in a tail shaft or, or some of that stuff is common stuff that happens along the way. So if you can find something like that, generally you can pick them up fairly cheap. It's just most people know that, so they're kind of hard to come by. And most people know that the market's going up on them, so they tend to keep them and have them repaired themselves. But if we can't find a four speed, we'll run it with three speed in it. Don't care. But if we don't find a four speed, then we'll use the remaining budget to uh, spruce it up a little bit, you know? Uh, maybe we uh, maybe we do have the seat redone or 
throw a couple of gauges in it, kind of know where that oil pressure's at, you know, something like that. Safety stuff does not count against our budget, so I don't have to worry about uh, coming off for seat belts and things like that. But I am going to let you know what some of those things cost. So if you go down that route, you do know how much money you will actually have to invest in it. So I will let you know about that stuff. And I'm going to do a few things that doesn't do anything but amuse me. Like I'm going to take the front bumper off and weld up and shave all the bolt holes in the front and bolt the bumper back on have studs welded the back so there's no bolt heads across the bumper. That doesn't actually do anything for the build. I just, I'm a metal guy and I gotta find something to weld on and grind on, so. But there it is. I wanna introduce you guys. You know, I name all my vehicles, the Galaxy's Legacy, the Cougar is Penny, Now I want to introduce you to Waylon. Y'all have a blessed day. I hope you follow along with this project. And uh, the next video will be me putting this in the shop, getting this motor and transmissions in it, jerked out of it, and uh, getting it outside I'm going to really clean the engine bay, detail it. The outside's going to leave it exactly like it is. The engine bay, I'm going to spend time to make nice. So, y'all stay tuned. Love you. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you hadn't. Hit the little bell if you want to be notified for the next video on this.